September 10th, Rhone, Hotel Continental. It is done. It is done. But is he dead? My mind is thoroughly upset by what I have seen. Well then, yesterday, the locksmith, having put on the iron shutters and door, I left everything open until midnight, although it was getting cold. Suddenly, I felt that he was there, and joy, mad joy, took possession of me. I got up softly, and I walked to the right and left for some time so that he might not guess anything. Then I took off my boots and put on my slippers carelessly. Then I fastened the iron shutters, and going back to the door, quickly I double-locked it with a padlock, putting the key into my pocket. Suddenly I noticed that he was moving restlessly around me. That, in his turn, he was frightened and was ordering me to let him out. I nearly yielded, though I did not yet. But putting my back to the door, I half opened it, just enough to allow me to go out backward, and as I am very tall, my head touched the lintel. I was sure that he had not been able to escape, and I shut him up quite alone, quite alone. Oh, what happiness. I had him fast. Then I ran downstairs, in the drawing room which was under my bedroom, I took the two lamps and I poured all the oil onto the carpet, the furniture, everywhere. Then I set fire to it and I made my escape, after having carefully double-locked the door. I went and hid myself at the bottom of the garden, in a clump of laurel bushes. How long it was. How long it was. Everything was dark. Silent. Motionless, not a breath of air and not a star, but heavy banks of clouds which one could not see, but which weighed, oh, so heavily on my soul. I looked at my house and waited. How long it was! I already began to think that the fire had gone out on its own accord, or that he had extinguished it, when one of the lower windows gave way under the violence of the flames and a long, soft, caressing sheet of red flame mounted up the white wall and kissed it as high as the roof. The light fell onto the trees, the branches, and the leaves, and a shiver of fear pervaded them also. The birds awoke, a dog began to howl, and it seemed to me as if the day were breaking. Almost immediately, two other windows flew into fragments and I saw that the whole of the lower part of my house was nothing but a terrible furnace. But a cry, a horrible, shrill, heart-rending cry, a woman's cry, sounded through the night, and two garret windows were opened. My God, I had forgotten the servants. I saw the terror-struck faces in their frantically waving arms. Then, overwhelmed with horror, I set off to run to the village, shouting, Help! Help! Fire! Fire! We met some people who were already coming onto the scene, and I went back with them to see. By this time, the house was nothing but a horrible and magnificent funeral pile, a monstrous funeral pile which lit up the whole country. A funeral pile where men were burning, and where he was burning also. He, he, my prisoner, that new being, the new master, the Orla. Suddenly the whole roof fell in between the walls and a volcano of flames darted up to the sky through all the windows which were opened onto that furnace, I saw the flames darting, and I thought that he was there, in that kiln, dead. Dead. Uh, perhaps his body, 
Was not his body which was transparent indestructible by such means as would kill ours? If he was not dead, perhaps time alone has power over that invisible and redoubtable being. Why this transparent, unrecognizable body, this body belonging to a spirit, if it also had to fear ills, infirmities, and premature destruction? Premature destruction. All human terror springs from that. After man, the Orla, after him, who can die every day, at any hour, at any moment, by any accident, he came who was only to die at his own proper hour and minute, because he had touched the limits of his existence. No. No. Without any doubt, he is not dead. Then, then, then I suppose I must kill myself. <laughs>